thought that God's love can never lessen for us? Now, ours can. Our, our love for him can be lower or lessen, lessen than what it should be and could be. Our love for one another can be lesser. But God's love can never be lesser than what it is. It's the greatest, the greatest love. And not only does God love us, but he showed us how much he loved us by sending his son to the cross of Calvary. And so this morning, once again, I, I uh, stand here um, and, and I just hope and pray this is the one that the Lord, I felt that he wanted me to go ahead and preach this morning. It, it does not happen often that way, but it does happen sometimes where I'm not sure until, until uh, l- the last minute the Lord will show me. Um, but either way, when we talk about the Lord, it's always good. Now, I'd like for you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12 this morning. The title of my message this morning is, When Man Meets God. When Man Meets God. Genesis chapter 12. I would like to read the first four verses here. Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. If you're able this morning, would you please stand as we read the Word of God? Genesis 12, beginning to read at verse 1 through verse 4. The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Let's pray. Fathers, we come to you this morning. Lord, we desperately need your help. Father, I I don't know, Lord, if I'm sure there's maybe even more of a word, maybe the word urgency. Lord, help us realize today how important this is, this time right now, that we are coming to you, Lord, and seeking after you. Lord, asking you, Lord, to speak to us through your word today. Father, this time that we are meeting with you, Lord, we we need to be spoken to from your word. We need to be challenged. We need to be convicted. We need to be changed. And Lord, I pray whatever is needed, in each individual life, including my own this morning, God, that through your word you will do it. I pray that if anyone hears this message that's never trusted Jesus as Savior, I do pray that today would be the day into their salvation. Father, I do pray God is, Lord, with as much of a humble heart as I possibly can. Lord, I just pray, God, give us a hunger for you. I mean a real, a real hunger for you and Lord, a, a real thirst for righteousness and a desire of prayer. Lord, I'll just praise you and thank you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. As I begin this morning, I, I don't want you to raise your hand, but I cannot believe today is already September the 1st. Uh, this year has just been unbelievable. For our, I know for myself, uh, for the church, as a church, we have been extremely busy. If, if you are a part of this assembly of believers and you don't feel that way, then apparently you just weren't involved in much of it that was going on, but we have been extremely busy. And at the beginning of the year, I, I gave you a challenge uh, for a little while, and, and I said, I challenge you to to this year, and I know it's not over yet, and like I said, I don't want you to raise your hand, but I challenge you to take a day to get alone with God just to be alone with the Lord. A 24-hour time just to be with God. No phone, no TV, no radio, no, no one else around, no distractions, but just to be with the Lord. I think this is very important. I know myself, I started a few, uh, several years ago, I started doing it myself once a year of doing 
three or four days, and now I try to do it twice a year. In fact, that's, and that's what I will do when I leave North Carolina this week and get up, get down to Florida Thursday evening. I'll take Friday and Saturday, and I just want to spend those two days before Sherry gets there just to, just to be alone with the Lord. And folks, I, I'm not saying this trying to make it sound like, um, you know, that, that, that I'm, I'm, you know, above others or, or, or holy and righteous. No, it's, the reason I do this is because I need it. Because I know how I am. And I need, I need to hear from the Lord. I just need that time alone with Him. Just to open His Word, I, I do take, I'll, I'll listen during that time of three or four days. Once again, I have, you know, I don't, I, no internet service. A lot of times, some places I've gone didn't even have phone service on my cell phone. Um, and so, and I just spend that time, I will listen to some preaching CDs. I'll listen to some, some gospel music along with studying and reading and just in prayer. And, and so I challenge you, if you haven't done it yet, to please, to please do that. Try to do it before the end of the year. Someone might say, Pastor, I can't, I can't take a, a day to do that. You can. The question is, do you want to? And the reason I'm encouraging you to do this is because I know that it's, it's always a very special time. And usually it's not so much during that time that I see the Lord working in my life, but it's after those days I see God, how he works in my life. Listen, I, I'm, I'm far from where I need to be, but I do know this. God has proven himself and shown himself enough that I, I want to know him as best as I possibly can. I was telling, I've told several people before, but here recently I was talking to someone else, and, and I told them the way that God had called me into the ministry when he had called me July the 2nd of 1996. God called me to preach. When he called me to preach, I was voted in here October 20th, so three and a half months later I was pastoring. I didn't have a chance to go to Bible college or seminary. And so I've always felt like I'm behind. And so I've always spent a lot much time in studying and studying and studying. But the reason I do that, it really not, shouldn't be because I feel like I'm behind. That, that should be the life of every Christian, especially a pastor that's leading a congregation to have that time to spend alone with the Lord and to spend time in studying and in time in prayer. And so, but I've always felt like I'm behind, so I'm always... I'm trying to study as much as I can. I'm trying to, I look at courses online. I meet with pastors. I have Bible studies. I mean, I just, I'm trying to just take in all I can because uh, I just feel like I need to catch up. But what I really need, I, I, just want, I just want to know all there is that I can about the Lord God. And when we come to this passage of Scripture in Genesis chapter 12, and we read, of course, of Abram and what happened to him, I don't want you to turn there, but in Hebrews eleven six, 6, the Bible says, but without faith it is impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, of course, of course is a, a chapter that teaches and shows us about faith. In that passage of Scripture, of course, Abraham is one that is used as an, as an illustration of an example of great faith. He has an example of willing faith, and Abraham's fellowship with God should, should really be encouraging to all of us. Whenever you go back and you read in the scriptures and you read about these great men and women of God and you see the tight relationship they had with the Lord, I want you to realize and you should know that that can be you and I also. God has not selected just a, a few through history or through time or ages that, he, that he, he, he maybe gives more wisdom to or gives more of a hunger for him or, or uses them more. Every one of us can be just like anyone that we read about if we will really truly give ourselves to God as they did. And you say, but I, I, I can never do that. I mean, listen, everyone you also read about, God also in his scripture, he always shows us and teaches us and shows us even the sin and the faults that, that these folks had, but yet they had a hunger and a desire for God. God even said about David, even after he had sinned, he said that this was a man after his own heart. And so we see this as an example of, of Abraham. At the, at the time in life of Abram in his country, which today is Syria, there was a, a lot of uh, pagan idolatry going on. 
And of course, the Lord God, he wanted to call out for himself a group of folks, of course, starting with Abraham and of, of a group of people that he could show to the world who, who he was. He could work through them, he could teach them and show others. At the time that, that Abram was called out, when you look at it and you study, you understand he, he had no Bible. He had no building. The sanctuary and temple was not, was not here. He, he had no religious traditions. He had no, uh, no denominations. He had no pastor to go to for spiritual strength. I mean, he had a lot of things that a lot of Christians look for today. Abram had none of those things, but he had the one thing that really mattered. And Abram had, after the Lord God revealing himself to him, he, he had a, a, a true desire and a hunger for God. And that, that is, it's sad to say, but that's missing in a, a lot of Christians today is a real hunger and desire for God. Not just the things of God, not just the Word of God and the will of God, which there should be and it comes along with that, but just God Himself. We are living in a, a world and era today when much, of course, is even in the pulpits. Many doubt, much doubt is always given that not sure if we can really believe this passage of Scripture, not sure if we can believe that this or that, and, and of course taken away of many of the things of God, what He says that they don't want to say because they're afraid they're going to offend someone or hurt someone. And folks, God deserves for what he has to say, he deserves for it to be told and spoken of. No matter what it does. No matter if it drives everybody in the assembly away. God deserves for what he is and who he is and what he's done to be spoken of. And many today, though, they, they will not even go that far. There was, back at that time, all he had was a hungry heart to know God. And God was looking for a man that, just would simply believe him. Not always doubting, not always questioning, but simply believe him and trust him because of who he was. When was the last time, as I made mention a while ago about getting alone, when was the last time that you, you put away everything just to meet with God? I mean, you, you went out of your way. You stopped even something that you would, you would like to do. You just set it aside. Have you ever had a time in your life that, that God has summoned you? To where you'll be doing something and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just speaks your heart and it comes to where you, you just drop what you're doing because you just He's drawing you, drawing you to Him and, you, and all of a sudden you just have this great desire and hunger. You, you just have to be with Him. It's not that you want to be, you have to. And it, and it could be that many Christians is not even, uh, not, they've not, never experienced this in their life. And it's because the life they've been living is not one that's brought them to that place. When was the last time that maybe you spent time praying to the Lord God and, 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 and not necessarily asking Him for, for needs or even asking him for a burden that's laid on you, which there's nothing wrong with because he tells us to boldly come to the throne of grace and to bring our burdens and desires and things of that nature to him. He, he tells us this. But when was the last time we just, we just prayed to God just because who he was, just because he was God? What about our attitude when we come to church? Are you, and, and this is good, are you so faithful to your position that you come because of your position in the church? That's good, but that's not why we should come. We should want to come to the house of God because we're faithful to God. And I thank those that, all those that have positions. It takes, listen, you look around, we're not a, we're not a big church, but in order for it to, to run properly and for us to be able to uh, uses uh, uh, the, the capabilities to the extreme that God's given us. It, it takes a lot of people. It, it cannot just be done by the pastor. And I, I thank the Lord. I was just talking to a pastor just recently, very discouraged, and, 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 I, and I was just brokenhearted because as they were speaking to me and 
Uh, they, they literally, they do everything themselves. And, and I'm thinking, Lord, I've been so blessed because we have so many people that's, that's carrying a lot of the responsibilities of church that, that I, I'm able to do exactly what he's called a pastor to do and I'm able to spend the time I need to in prayer and study. And I, I feel so blessed because of that. I really do. But when was the last time that we just wanted to be at the house of God just, just because of who the Lord was, just because of who God was? Let me, let me go to, if you would, go with me to Matthew chapter 11. I, I know that I just finished literally a series, and I use this passage of Scripture a lot, but there's, there's just something I want to point out here that, that I, did not, I did not mention it. Um, when I, I was given this series and used this passage of Scripture here recently. Matthew 11, I want you to look at verse 28 through 30. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Christ here, as I made mention before, and like I said, I know we've spent a lot of time here, but what, I'm, what I want to share with you, I, I did not share this with you. Christ says here in verse 28, verse 28 is talking of salvation, verse 29 is after salvation. He says in verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Then in 29 he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As we, of course, talk about salvation, we see here that by the time a lot of Christians get from verse 28 to verse 29, they stop. They don't proceed no further. In other words, they come unto the Lord, they hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, they come unto the Lord to be saved, they accept Jesus Christ as personal Savior, but then when it comes to verse 29, when he then says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, that's where they stop. There's many believers today, they've never taken the time to learn of Jesus Christ. They, they know enough about him and of course how he died for them, but they've never taken to time the time to learn of him. Now I want to point something out here that's, that, that is, is very interesting. When the Lord says in verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn. That word learn means to increase one's knowledge, be informed. Now listen, to learn by use and practice. You hear that definition? By the way, this definition is from the original word in the Greek. Increase one's knowledge. Christ says, I want you to learn of me. Increase one's knowledge, be informed, to learn by use and practice. You cannot learn of our Savior Christ if you're not practicing his, what he has taught us. And the more you, you, the more you obey the Lord, the more you learn about him. The less you obey, the less you know about him. You might, listen, you can study and study and you can learn many things, but the spiritual things of God, you're not going to learn until you start doing what God has commanded for us to do. And can I just say this as well, because... This is getting to be a, a serious issue, and, and I know some think that it, it's just become, you know, some preacher's just going to rant or rave. Now, I'm not here to rant or rave on anything. I'm just here to point out truth. As, as best I possibly can is point out truth. I want you to look at another word there. Take my yoke upon you and learn of. That word of, it means origin of cause. In other words, Christ says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Actually, what Christ is saying there is learn me. Learn me. There's a difference in learning about somebody and learning somebody. And this is what Christ wants us to do. The more we learn Christ, the more we'll learn of Christ. Now, let me, and I said I wanted to share something with you. Uh, that, that to me has become a serious issue. And that word of, the King James Version, as best as I can see in looking back at several other versions, is the only version to use the word of. Every other version uses the word from. 
That's a big difference. That's a huge difference. That's a, that's a huge difference in the meaning. In other words, many other, other versions say, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And some say, well, that's, that's about this. No, it's not the same. I just, the word of right here, Christ is saying, learn me. In other words, Jesus Christ, he doesn't just want us to learn about his teachings. He doesn't just want us to learn about uh, uh, his history or, or to learn about, of course, uh, his, his, his time here on this earth. God, Christ is saying, I want you to learn me. I want you to know me, not just what I teach. In other words, you and I, we need to learn his teachings, but we also need to learn him intimately. And so therefore, I just, I just wanted to point that out here in that passage of Scripture because like I said, it just kind of goes along with this message and I didn't, I didn't really mention that uh, before. Now go back with me to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17, I want you to look at verse 1 and 2, and then I'm going to skip down and read verse 5. The Bible says in Genesis 17, 1, And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And now look at verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be, shall be Abraham. For a, for a father of many nations have I made thee. You know, when we were back over uh, just a little while ago in Genesis chapter 12, the Bible said here that, he says, I'll bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. Let me tell you something, that's one reason the United States of America has been blessed like it has is because of us being a very close ally with Israel. And whenever you hear of anybody, especially politicians, any politician that wants to take America away from being an ally to Israel, you need to cut that person off because they're trying to lead us to something that's dangerous. And it's not just for Israel, dangerous against God. Our nation's already far enough from God. We need to come back to as much of God as we possibly, possibly can. The Word of God, the will of God, and the ways of God. And it's very important. And also, let me just say this. When he told uh, to, to Abram, he said, And thou shalt be a blessing. Don't forget now, the reason that God blesses us is so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Don't be a hoarder of blessings. Whenever God blesses you, he's blessing you so you can be a blessing to somebody else. And we can share the blessings of the Lord God. But anyway, back to, to Genesis chapter 17. We, notice, we know that God spoke audibly with Abram because at the time, once again, he, he did not have a Bible to study. He didn't, he didn't even have the five, first five books of, of the Bible and, that he could read. And, and so God spoke audibly with Abraham. And Abram, Abraham had a glorious experience with God. And see, many folks today, they talk of all sorts of uh, spiritual experiences. The greatest spiritual experience that, that there should be in our life is this, to have a conscious awareness of God. To just simply have that conscious awareness of Him. Abraham was consciously aware of God in His presence and Abraham, he was willing to do whatever it took to know God and to fellowship with him. He was willing to do. Now, don't get me wrong, and uh, we're not saying Abraham was a perfect man and he did everything. No, Abraham sinned against God, but he had a deep hunger for God. With many believers, God is, is usually an afterthought. In other words, we only, we only think on him when it's convenient for us or when we have a need. Now listen, you have to understand, and, and we understand this and the way the Lord teaches us too, that listen, you, you cannot always be thinking on the things of God. In, in certain times, certain jobs, you've got to concentrate on your job of what you're doing. The question comes though, when you do have time to think on the Lord, do you take advantage of that time? 
do you make time? In other words, if you've had a real busy day and uh, you have an opportunity and maybe you get to grab something real quick to eat, you know, and you, you, you say, okay, I, I can either take and, and eat real quick 15 minutes and maybe just, you know, let me spend just at least five minutes in prayer with the Lord and let me, let me just read a chapter here. Or do we say, oh, I'll just do that later? In other words, even times of pleasure, self-pleasures, have we ever put self-pleasures off so that we can spend time with God? In other words, there, God knows there's times that we cannot be thinking about Him at the very moment because of what we have to think as far as our job or a situation requiring us to be focused. The question is, where is your heart attitude, though, when you do have time to think on the things of God? Do we spend time doing that? Do we make time? Do we take time? Are we willing to lose sleep to spend some time with the Lord? Are we willing to lose some time with self-pleasure so we can spend some time with the Lord? In other words, don't just, when God says, Christ said, learn, listen, learn me. Don't just learn creation. Learn from the Creator. Don't just learn about creation. Learn the Creator. Don't just learn the promises of God. Learn the promiser of, of the promises. Don't just learn of eternity. Learn the eternal God. And don't just learn of love, but learn the one who is love. The Bible says God is love. In other words, we need to learn the teachings of the Lord. And this is where the problem is. There's a lot of folks today, they won't even accept and obey the teachings of God. They try to only pick and choose what they would like. That is saying to the Lord then, I don't want to learn of you. I don't want to learn you. Because if you really wanted to learn Christ, then you would obey what Christ has told us. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's really getting tiresome to keep hearing people, you hear Bible truth preached, and then folks try to justify it not to do it. All you're doing is deceiving yourselves. You're, you're only hurting yourself when you do this. A lot of things that's being preached today, and some churches, they, they'll come and they'll say, well, just, oh, they're, they're, don't worry about them. They're just one of them old-fashioned you know, preachers, I, I mean, what do you, what do you mean old-fashioned preachers? Well, in your mind, what's that? I like when people use that comment. Yeah, you remind me of them old-fashioned preachers. What, what exactly, what do you mean? Give me a definition of what do you mean old-fashioned. If it means being like God, yes, I'm old-fashioned and I want to be recognized as old-fashioned. Let me tell you something, the things of God, this book right here is as fresh and living and new today as it was the day it was written. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And just because you're going to try to change things, you're not changing His Word. Just because you want to try to change the way you think on the things of the Lord, you're not going to change Him. And so as we uh, read this passage of Scripture, as we see and study the Word of God, we we need to come to a place where we learn of these things, that we, we learn of God Himself. He goes on to tell us in Genesis chapter 17, verse 3, he says, And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying. Now, when Abram met God, he, was, he showed much reverence and respect to the Lord, and we was, he was submissive to him. It really bothers me when people do not show respect to God. When, when they treat him or talk about him like he's, like they're talking about their, their, bu their best buddy or something. Someone just told me recently, I, I don't know if it's something like this, that when a person finished praying, they said, chat with you later or something like that, chat later with you. That's so disrespectful. See, to show disrespect and irreverence to God like that, we have not seen God like Abraham has seen God. We have not seen God like Isaiah has seen God. If we, because if we would, if we did, we would not show disrespect to him. The Bible says, holy and reverend is his name. His name is holy and reverend. We need, we need to use biblical names. We need to use the names of the Lord God. 
I never forget years ago, and y'all have heard me say this before, years ago, I, uh, I don't know exactly when, but it got to be a, a real big saying, you know, talking about Jesus Christ, he's, he's my homeboy, or he's my homie. How disrespectful. They had t-shirts made like that. In fact, I'll never forget one of the t-shirts that had uh, Jesus is my homeboy in it, and it showed two chairs and the back of two chairs and two people in them, and I, one was supposed to be Christ, and you could see a beer in each one of them's hands. And folks, we, we look at stuff like that, and, and, and we, many of us, we say, man, that, that is so disrespectful, it's, it's horrible, but that's the way a lot of people, Christians, are even looking, and that's the way that Christ is being portrayed, even in a lot of churches and, and coming across the pulpit. That's why the people's acting like this, because it's being portrayed by those preaching, of course, are supposed to be the pastors or leaders of the church. But God is to be respected, and Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, you know, I'll never forget, I was one time watching the channel, Preacher Channel, and, and this guy come on there, and oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I, I started listening to him, I thought, what in the world? This guy is so far in left field. He, he got telling, and I mean the place was packed. And he got telling people, he said that he was as, just like John was, that he was taken to the, to the third heaven. He was taken up into heaven, that the Lord took him there. He said, it wasn't a dream. He said, the Lord actually took me. And he, he said, I, I walked in, the, the, the Lord God met me at the gate, and he said, oh, and, and listen, this guy's, I mean, he is going on. Oh, he said, this gate, he said, is... The pearls, uh, he said, the pearl, pearly gates, and it's beautiful. And I mean, he's giving, and he said, we walked in. He said, man, it's just a street. He said, folks, it's so beautiful. And he said, it's just the be most beautiful place you ever. And he's going through all this. And, and he, said, uh, uh, he said, you know, we were just walking along. And he said, I thought, you know, I'd kid with God a little bit. And I said, now, Lord, is that my mansion over there? And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, let me tell you something. There's not going to be no kidding going on when we get to heaven before God. We're going to be on our face. Understand, Abraham wasn't even in the presence of God seeing him yet or in his presence, and he fell on his face. And that was so disrespectful for a person to talk like him and God were good friends and buddy. God is God. He is the creator of heaven and earth. He is a creator of mankind, and he deserves the respect of it. God, of course, sitting on the throne, you and I, we need to be listening. You know, many Christians, unfortunately, when it comes to spending some time or talking to the Lord, they, they do all the talking, but they don't do no listening. We need to spend more time listening to the Lord. And some might say, well, how, how do I do that? His word Listen, God does not speak to us audibly anymore today. He has given us his word. He has, go, he has pinned down or had pinned down all that he wants us to know. Anything that's not in here, then God didn't want you to know about it. But there's enough in here that if we live to be 10,000 years old, we still wouldn't be able to learn but the tip of the iceberg of it. So there's plenty in there that the Lord has given us, given more, more than enough needed. But when we see that that, that Abraham, when he, when, he was, when he was before the Lord God and he was on his face, listen, there comes a lot of times we, we need to stop doing all the talking. Let's start doing some listening. Listen to what the Word of God says. If anyone ever tells you that the Holy Spirit spoke to them and the Holy Spirit said such and such, and if what they're telling you, what the Holy Spirit said, if it does not line up with Scripture, they're lying. The Holy Spirit will never lead you or lay on your heart anything different than what's in God's Word. The Bible says we're to test the spirits. Guess what other spirits like to speak to us, to try to whisper in our ear and get us to think thoughts. Some people can come up with the most craziest thoughts. When you get away from God, your mind will think anything. And when we do meet with God, we need to listen. Listen, I'm not talking about just listening here. Now, we need to listen here. We need to accept in our heart. And then this is where true listening comes from. 
It means applying it to your life, obeying it. That's listening. That's hearing God. We obey what he has told us. If a true believer thinks that the Christian life has kind of maybe gotten dull, maybe kind of gotten routine, it's, the Christian life's kind of gotten boring, then all I can say is you've never met God. You have never met him. Because when you meet him, there is nothing boring about it. There's so much to learn, it'll blow your mind. There's so many of the deep things of God, some folks never even come close to getting to the, the, the deep things of God, to launching out in the deep. And so if you've come to the place in your life that you feel your Christian life or the Christian life is kind of boring, it's, it's not fun. When you say fun, what, what are you talking fun? That, that you're not able to feed on sin? The Bible says sin is enjoyable for a season, but it always catches up to you. There's always consequences from it, and it's always miserable at the end. And so when we meet with God, when you've met with God, you know you've met with God. Today, we have preached the word of God. We've, we've brought you here today. We've come here today to meet with God, not to meet with Richard Smith, but to meet with God. And I've tried my best to be a messenger, to, to teach and preach God's truth today that we can leave here and say we've, we've met with God. Some feel, that, some feel that they haven't really met with God if they haven't had some kind of feelings. You know, if, they, if maybe they haven't had, you know, a stirring in their heart or, or goosebumps or some kind of tingly feeling, they feel that they, they haven't met or if they haven't been emotionally moved. Yeah, those things might happen. But listen, meeting with God means that we're in his word, we're hearing, and now we're going to obey it. That's meeting with God. And I hope today you'll take serious of, of meeting with the Lord God as he's intended for us to meet with him. I'd like for you to close your eyes and bow your heads at this time.